The alarms sound over and over and over again, but the current crisis has set warning bells ringing louder than before. Watch Britain, my friends, and shudder. Why do you ask? Falling behind. In recent years, something really shocking and quite awful has happened. Britain has become the leading example of social collapse, taking over from America. While some poor countries are struggling, none have experienced such a rapid decline as Britain. Well, I guess it's high time you look at what's happening before there's a lot to talk about, for those who want to understand the future. You must have noticed the big mess, or as a London radio presenter called it, the catastrophe. Unfortunately, many Brits aren't fully realizing the consequences. The damage is already done. Yup, you heard that right. The future looks almost certain and not in a good way. As Britain grapples with economic challenges, even basic necessities like showers are becoming a luxury. The economic slowdown, driven by surging food and energy prices, alongside tax hikes and higher interest rates, paints a grim picture for many. Hard-pressed families and businesses are feeling the strain evident in strikes by public sector workers demanding better pay. The pinch is hitting middle-class families hard, with disposable incomes expected to drop by as much as 13%. Analysis by the National Institute for Economic and Social Research indicates that around 25% of households may struggle to cover food and energy bills from their take-home income, up from 20% last year. This economic pressure means making tough choices like turning down the heat and skipping showers to save on energy bills, and for many, resorting to food banks due to a significant jump in food prices. Now, the idea is simple. You are feeling unwell. You go to your local medical office or hospital, and within a few hours, you are seen by a doctor, given a diagnosis, and prescribed the necessary treatment. Perhaps most important, there is no bill at the end of your visit. Regardless of your income, employment status, address, or any other factors, this provision is free at the point of care. This is what more than 65 million people in the United Kingdom have come to expect from their country's healthcare system, the National Health Service. However, most winters, headlines warn that Britain's National Health Service is at breaking point. People are now asking, why is Britain's health service, a much-loved national treasure, falling apart? Things that were hard to imagine not long ago are happening a lot now. Hospitals are really full, way more than they should be. Some patients aren't getting care in hospital rooms. Instead, they are being treated in ambulances, hallways, waiting areas, and even small rooms, or sometimes not getting treated at all. An NHS worker in a Liverpool hospital described it as being similar to a war zone, telling CNN about the challenging situation. The stories we hear match the data. In December 2022, 54,000 people in England had to wait more than 12 hours for urgent admission, which was almost unheard of before the pandemic, according to NHS England data. The average time for an ambulance to come for a Category 2 condition, like a stroke or a heart attack, went over 90 minutes, way beyond the 18-minute target. In the week ending December 30th, there were 1,474 more deaths than the average over the past five years. That's too bad. Ambulance staff and nurses have been on strikes about pay and working conditions. The latest one by ambulance workers was on Monday, and more are planned in the coming weeks. The CEO of the NHS Confederation, representing NHS organizations in England, warned the government about concerns that on the day of a recent ambulance strike, they cannot guarantee patient safety. In response, a government health minister suggested the public avoid risky activity. So, the question remains, how did Britain even get here in the first place? Even with increased funding since the pandemic, the UK is still trying to catch up with what critics say is more than 10 years of not giving enough money to the NHS. According to an analysis by the Health Foundation, a health charity, the average day-to-day -day health spending in the UK from 2010 to 2019 was $3,715 per person per year. This was 18% below the EU-14 average, countries that joined the EU before 2004 of $4,518.
The UK has fewer MRI and CT scanners per person than the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development (OECD) on average, which means that staff often have to wait for the equipment to become available. Hospital beds are also in short supply. Over the past 30 years, the number of beds in England has more than halved, from around 299,000 in 1987 to 141,000 in 2019, according to analysis by the King's Fund, an independent think tank. The Collapse of Critical Services Now, in a complicated system, unexpected things can happen. The current crisis are not only making the situation more complex, but are also causing more problems and situations and the outcomes are becoming hard to predict. Public service workers across various fields are rebelling due to worsening pay, pension plans, and working conditions amidst the growing cost of living crisis. A survey by the British Medical Association in 2022 involving over 7,700 hospital consultants revealed that almost half, or 44%, were thinking of leaving the NHS this year. The transportation system is also struggling, with strikes and buses, trains, and the London Underground becoming a regular occurrence in British life. Even postal workers are now joining in. With little hope of pay keeping up with the rising cost of living, strikes are likely to become more frequent and severe, possibly surpassing the industrial action seen in the 1970s. The judicial system is facing similar challenges. The cost of living crisis led criminal barristers to strike for better pay. Though a less than ideal deal was reached, the profession is still dwindling with fewer people joining and more leaving for better opportunities elsewhere. These strikes have worsened bottlenecks in the criminal justice system, resulting in a backlog of cases that could take years to clear. Without key reforms, the increasing decline in the legal profession might eventually bring the system to a standstill. This is why, in September, the Law Society warned that the criminal justice system was on the verge of collapse unless all its parts received equal funding. It's like it has become a vicious cycle. How, you ask? As the expenses of operating the system go up, the benefits are getting smaller. Every attempt to deal with these crises ends up making things more expensive and complicated, adding a new set of issues. Consequently, more responses are needed, leading to more costs and complexity. This cycle keeps shrinking the system's ability to handle problems, speeding up its path towards collapse. Now, the possibility of preventing a collapse is getting smaller and smaller. Ignoring the crisis won't help either because the system will collapse on its own. Well, now that you know about the challenges facing the UK's healthcare system, here's a question for you. How do you think your country can improve its healthcare? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more eye-opening content. Until next time, stay informed and curious.